This is the Decoding Obesity Podcast, where we simplify, demystify, and decode obesity, helping you lose weight and feel great. So gear up for a fascinating journey through this ever-evolving field, and let's see what we find. And please remember that the thoughts and opinions on this podcast do not constitute medical advice. Don't forget to visit our website, www.decodingobesity.com, for show notes and more info. And now, here's your host of the Decoding Obesity Podcast, Dr. Avishkar Sabarwal. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Decoding Obesity Podcast. Listeners, I have created an amazing cheat sheet to help you get started and reach your target of 10,000 steps per day seamlessly. Head to www.decodingobesity.com forward slash 10,000 steps to get this resource. That is 10,000 in numerics followed by steps without any space. Now, 10,000 steps per day has become ingrained in our daily lives as a matter of fact. This has become a standard in a way against which we measure how physically active we are. I always used to think that there must be some scientific basis behind this. I thought maybe it had something to do with how much our ancestors walked on an average per day. But guess what? There isn't. I was shocked when I read about this. This was a marketing gimmick developed in 1965 by a Japanese company to market the device called Manpo Ki, which translates to 10,000 steps meter. Having said that, being physically active is beneficial. Any amount of physical activity is better than none. There have been so many devices that have been developed on the principle of measuring steps. Any fitness device you see these days almost always has a pedometer. Given its simplicity and popularity, it is no wonder that we have adopted this concept so quickly. This has become so popular that there have been a number of studies done on the use of pedometers in health, obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, etc. There was an interesting systematic review and meta-analysis looking at the effect of step counting on the changes in physical activity. Meta-analysis, speaking simplistically, is when the researchers club the data from several studies together so they can try and better assess if there is a pattern that they are able to observe. So in this meta-analysis, what they found was that counting steps leads to both short-term and long-term increases in physical activity. The other thing that they noticed was it does not matter if you use a very cheap pedometer or a very expensive device. Another systematic review found something similar. Having a step goal like 10,000 steps was an important predictor for an increase in physical activity. This highlights the fact that having a target to achieve makes it so much easier. The researchers also found that increased number of steps was associated with significant decrease in body mass index and blood pressure. A study from Australia looked at whether increasing the number of steps would have any effect on hospitalization and they found that indeed it does. Regardless of age, sex, number of medications, smoking or alcohol. For the primary care physicians listening to my episode, I want to point out two important studies from the UK called Pace Up and Pace Lift. Both of them looked at the use of pedometers in an outpatient setting and what they found was despite a short intervention period sustained increases in physical activity were seen at three years and four years respectively for these studies. These studies also showed significantly fewer new cardiovascular events and fractures in the intervention participants at four years. Of course the picture is not all rosy. There have also been studies that show no change in step counting, goal setting or physical activity with the use of pedometers. The problem with devices used is also the accuracy. They are all fraught with inaccuracies and either overestimate or underestimate the number of steps taken. This usually worsens when you are running. Also, a goal of 10,000 steps per day may not be sustainable for some groups including older adults and those living with chronic diseases and 10,000 steps per day may be too low a goal for children. There is also a problem of how quickly or how slowly these steps are taken because that of course changes with the intensity of exercise. The current recommendations for physical activity are at least 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity physical activity. In terms of walking, this translates to a cadence of about 100 steps per minute. 
The NHANES data from 2005 to 2006 showed that US adults spend just about five minutes at 100 to 119 steps per minute a day and just about two minutes at 120 plus steps per minute each day. You see, the whole idea behind 10,000 steps was to increase physical activity. In the end, I think the reasons behind this concept getting adopted the world over include the fact that it is easy to comprehend, easy to measure, sounds reasonable, gives you a clear target to achieve. Whatever the reasons, if you're trying to increase your physical activity, I think this is something you can certainly start with. This is by no means the be all end all. This does not replace the current recommendations of 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity physical activity. What it does is reduce the barrier of entry to the world of physical activity. Physical activity, regardless of whether it is exercise or not, is beneficial. Just like any goal, start small and build upon it. However, 10,000 steps should not be the final destination in your journey to health, but your first few steps. To help you get started and reach your target seamlessly, I've created a cheat sheet that you can download by heading to www.decodingobesity.com forward slash 10,000 steps. That's 10,000 in numerics followed by steps without any space in between. So www.decodingobesity.com forward slash 10,000 steps. So how many steps are you going to take today? You've been listening to the Decoding Obesity Podcast. Please remember, the information in this podcast should not be used in any legal capacity whatsoever. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are solely of the host and his guests and do not constitute medical advice. Views and opinions on this show do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of any organization. And that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you so much for listening in. Don't forget to visit our website, www.decodingobesity.com for show notes and more info. And if you've enjoyed this episode, please feel free to rate, review, and subscribe on your preferred podcast listening platform. We really appreciate that effort. Until next time.